Jerry, Bob, and Mark, you guys have been kicking around, making music for half a century. Why submit yourselves to the documentary process treatment now? Now or never. Right. <laughs> uh, it was almost an accident. Because <laughs> uh, this started out, the idea was just to take some old archival films and um, archive them. And I uh, didn't know the difference between the word documentary and archival at, at one time, mm -hmm. 10 years ago. And they stumbled forward and got us into this long pathway that finally leaded to tonight, tomorrow right. night. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of amazing footage that you have dating way back to the early 70s. I mean, Chris, like that gave you, and then, you know, all of you as filmmakers, it gave you a lot of material to work with. How Talk a bit about the process of I guess first even approaching them about the documentary and then working from all of that archival material. Uh, there was a mutual friend that sort of connected us. I remember we went out to dinner a couple times and yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone was like jumping, you know, um, they seemed like fine with it, you know, but not like they weren't, I don't think they were asking for a documentary to be made, but I think it was, it was one of those stories that when you actually started going through the material, you couldn't believe that it hadn't been done at, you know, this way before, because they were such a visual band that it was perfect for a documentary. We always wanted to work with Chris, but he only did documentaries. So that's like, we had to say, okay, we'll do a documentary. <laughs> what other, how, how else could you envision it other than a, other than a documentary? <laughs> Lots of ways. <laughs> well, you know, did, I mean, Chris Devo a has a history of in Hindi. a subversive aesthetic, right. something somewhat transgressive, somewhat unexpected, Obviously, we were always satirizing things and questioning authority. And we could imagine four opposing documentaries that you'd watch and decide, like Rashomon, which one is true. But they'd all be true. Yeah, I mean, when we talk about the subversive aesthetic of Devo, which really introduced, I feel like, this idea of our rock or this idea of having intellectual ideas in, your, in pop, what can sound like popular music, do you feel, is there something about in reintroducing Devo perhaps to like a, a younger generation now through this documentary that would make it re that makes it especially resonant with 2023. Well, unfortunately, the evolution turned out to be real. We were <laughs> we were actually in spite of the fact that we were talking about it 50 years ago, we were kind of we had this optimism that we were hoping that things would would uh, get sorted out. Yeah, we didn't really expect it to <laughs> go the direction of the warning we were putting out, like we were canaries in the coal mine, but it's horrific to see what we envisioned happened and in fact surpassed our worst fears. Did you, were you operating in a feeling of being misunderstood at the time or was that not really like, a, that didn't really have a soundtrack for you? We're probably the most misunderstood band of the late 20th century, I would think. Uh, well, Dan and Chris, what, what do you guys feel like the movie sets out to do to sort of debunk what, what has been misunderstood? What's, what's sort of the goal? Uh, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if there was necessarily a goal. I think it was more, I feel like everything they were talking about is still relevant today. And I think that, you know, it, it for me personally, the band was incredibly inspiring as an artist. Um, and I would just hope that there's some young kids that could stumble across them. But, but also, like, I grew up with Devo and was incredible. Um, they were so influential to me personally. But, like, I still feel like I knew, I knew so little, much less than I thought I did once we actually got into making the movie. Like, it, that was... Some, surprising to me because you think you know something and then when you actually spend more time looking through things you just realize that there was a lot more happening than you might have even realized and I think part of that is because it was like 80s 90s for me you weren't really you didn't have access to information in the same way that you do today so I think now it's nice that people could actually if they see this movie they have the opportunity to go much further in, into looking at things there's so much available that you can you could dive into. Do you, well, yeah. I was just, yeah, that's what? true. <laughs> I was just going to say, I feel like when Chris was going through all of the footage and seeing what there was, there was such a timeless quality to what all of these guys were saying. And, you know, Chris really fit the pieces together in a way where 
when you hear their message and what they have to say and what they were saying all the way back then, it feels like something that made sense then, but it could completely make sense today. And, you know, I think it just makes for a really timeless and evergreen film. Yeah, I mean, was there a kind of organizing principle that you used in assembling all of that archival? You know, is there a sort of a blueprint of a narrative or does that or does that emerge out of the actual the discovery and the editing of that footage? Probably the latter. I mean, I mean, think that, you know, there's a chronological aspect of the way things, you know, happen that is, is to add some order to chaos is, I think, was helpful. And it's organic, I think. It doesn't go from the top down or the top up. It it kind of goes both ways at once. Because, I mean, obviously Devo had some overarching alternative view of reality that informed the body of work, but that's just an inspiration. Then there's the songs themselves. I mean, bands don't get signed to record deals because of an idea they had. It's the proof is in the pudding. And Chris worked with the proof. I mean, of any movie I've worked on, it's probably the one that I've been able to watch repeatedly the most without getting tired of it because it's, you're just like, you can, you can, the music itself is so enjoyable to sort of just, it's, it's almost like a giant music video in a way. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, always with Devo, there is a real performance element to it in a way that is not necessarily true of like other bands. I mean, what's sort of your view of like, I, you know, I, do you feel like that's something that's kind of missing from, you know, popular music as it's performed now? Hmm. <laughs> Substance? Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's always been the case, though. Um, pop music isn't really dependent upon substance no. for the most part. So if you bring substance into it, you're a suspect. So you have to kind of like figure out how to do it, you know, like around right. the corner. And you can name the people who did bring substance into pop music probably on two hands. Right. No, there's not that many of them. <laughs> right. No. No. Uh, you know, the, the, the movie also functions as a real kind of origin story for, for all of you. And I wondered if you felt like coming from Ohio, did that make a, you know, did that make a difference did that make change your perspective well i mean of course it did but it's like you didn't come from new york or la where many of your contemporaries did so how do you feel like that sort of shaped your whole arc pretty central i don't think devo could have come from la or new york yeah that's I, true yeah say, i say think we took a, a <clears throat> I, I think we took a negative and turned it into a positive because we were surrounded by such anti-intellectual right-wing blue-collared people who thought we were a joke and who actually hated us, that it gave us fuel for the fire. And media wasn't paying attention to us at all. So when we finally burst upon the scene, we had had about four years to work out what we were doing. We came fully formed and blew people away. Chris, what would you say is something that you, uh, one thing that you m most surprised you that you learned or something that you did not know about Devo that sort of really struck you through this process? I don't think I understood the evolution of MTV and sort of how it, the interplay with Devo, like that. Yeah, I don't, I, because I grew up, MTV started, Devo was all over MTV, but didn't really understand. They were doing this before, you know, people were making music videos and sort of then how MTV sort of, they, they were so valuable to MTV at, at, at the onset and sort of how that relationship evolved or devolved yeah, <laughs> over right. time.